Okay, so the key to understanding this question is that we're dealing in scientific notation. Our numbers are guaranteed to be written in that form. They tell us that here, and they say what values of a and b will make this statement sometimes, always, and never true. Explain. So in this, we, we notice that we have 10 to the third here. That's a thousand, right? And a is some number times a thousand. And here we have b times 10 squared, which is a hundred, right? So if you think about the, the and we're saying that a has got to be less than, the, this number, a times 1,000, has to be less than b times 100. Now, with scientific notation, uh, with positive numbers, this will, will never happen. If you think about the extreme case, where a is the smallest whole number it can be, which is 1, and let's make b, there's, there's no real largest candidate for b, right? Remember, when you're looking for a highest value for that first number, the range is between 1 and 10 not equal to 10. If I said, oh, 9 is the biggest number, you can then say, oh, 9 and a half. And I could say, well, what about 9.9? .9? You could say, what about 9.9? .9? 9, and so forth. So we'll just look at the largest whole number to test extremes here. It's a good thing to do in mathematics. So assuming A is the lowest number it could be, right? You want to see, can we make it less? Can we make this thing less than this one? So let's make A the smallest thing it could be, and B the largest whole number it could be. What happens? Well, we get 1 times 1,000, and 9 times 100. So in this extreme case, we still get 1,000 and 900 here, and that just means that, oh, the number on the left is larger. And that usually connects to the algorithm most people use when they're comparing ex um, si numbers in science notation. They look at the exponent and say, oh, this exponent is larger, and this one's smaller. So that means that this number on the left is also larger. And that works for positive numbers. However, for negatives, it does not. And that's how we could make this always true. So the way we would make it never true, by the way, is if a and b are positive. It would never be true. This would also never be true if a and b were zero, because we have zero times a thousand, right? Write that down over here. Zero times a thousand versus zero times a hundred. Well, what happens there? Well, that means they're equal, right? They would both equal zero. So the two ways to get these things never true, is to use positive values for a and b or zero for a and b. Now, sometimes, you know, overall, this statement is sometimes true and sometimes not, but depends on the values of a and b. I don't know how to pick a and b values and make it sometimes true. It's a little confusing to me, um, right? If you pick values for a and b, that'll make the statement true or false. False. It can't make them both at the same time. So it's kind of a confusing word to use there. Um, but we can think through it logically. Now we want to try to make it always true. Well, let's think about this. I mean, if, if, if positive numbers make this never true, I'm wondering, hmm, would negative numbers make this always true? Let's try an example. Let's, we want to make this side less than the right-hand side. Let's test an extreme case. Let's pick A to be the largest negative number we have, which is negative 1 and b, they'd be the smallest negative number, whole number, integer, excuse me, that we can use, is negative 9, right? Negative 9 is smaller than negative 1. What happens here? Well, we have one time, negative 1 times 10 to the third versus negative 9 times 10 squared. That means negative 1 times 10 to the third is negative 1,000, right? And negative 9 times 10 squared is negative 900. Which number is larger? Well, negative 900 is larger. Let's try some more examples if we're not convinced. We tried negative 1 and negative 9. Let's try the reverse negative 9 and negative 1. So you have negative 9 times 10 to the third and negative 1 times 10 squared. Well, negative 1 times 10 squared is negative 100 and negative 9 times 10 to the third is negative 9,000. Really small number. So we did it, right? And you can keep testing examples for A and B, but what you'll realize is that if A and B are negative, this is always true. All right, hope this helped.